All right, guys, so here we have an air compressor and we have air entering it. So let's go ahead and draw it out. So here we have a compressor and we have air entering it. So that's just going to be air and of course air exits as well. And we're told that our entering air has a pressure of one bar and a temperature at one of 300 Kelvin. And when this air exits, we have a pressure of six bar. And then this mass flow rate M dot is four kilograms per second. Next, we're told that the process has the equation described by PV pressure volume to the 1.27 is equal to a constant. Next, we're told that heat transfer occurs outwards of the compressor, 46.95 kilojoules per kilogram. And that's out of the compressor and into the surrounding water. We're told we can neglect the kinetic and potential energy effects, and we have to calculate the power of the compressor in kilowatts. So it's gonna be the power is in kilowatts because we have air flowing in and air flowing out we can use the conservation of mass and energy principle over control volume to calculate what the work or the power in this case is of the compressor so simply all we have to do is the heat transfer of the control volume which in this case is the compressor minus the uh, power plus the sum of all inlets of the mass flowing in times the enthalpy flowing in, specific enthalpy flowing in, minus the opposite, so whatever's exiting, so the exiting mass flow rate times the exiting enthalpies. And this is all equal to zero. Now our target here is the WCV, which is the power. So we need to figure out what all these other variables are. So let's start off with the heat transfer. So we know that basically capital Q dot is just going to be equal to the mass flow rate times the heat transfer given to us. So that's going to be equal to 4 kilograms per second times 46.95 kilojoules per kilogram. And we're going to be left with 187.8 kilowatts. Now, it's important to note that because the heat's exiting the compressor, the heat transfer is actually a negative 46.95 or a negative 187.8 kilowatts. Now, we have to find the specific enthalpy at the inlet. So at 1, at the inlet, or H1, how can we find that? Well... We have that T1 is equal to 300 Kelvin. And at 300 Kelvin, we can turn to our property table, A22. And we're looking at air right here, so ideal gas properties of air. You go to temperature of 300 degrees, and you have a specific enthalpy of 300.19. So we can go back here. So we have H1 is equal to 319 and that's kilojoules per kilogram as stated by the table. Now the final variable that we need to find the power is the exiting enthalpy or HE, which is equal to H2, which is an unknown. To find the enthalpy at the inlet or H1, we had to find the temperature. Notice here that we're told that this is actually a polytropic process because we have PV to the N is equal to a constant. We can apply the temperature, pressure, and volume relationship of an ideal gas in a polytropic process. If you need a refresher, that relation is T2 over T1 is equal to P2 over P1. And then this is to the N minus 1 over N. That is equal to v1 over v2 and put that in parentheses to the n minus 1. If you're having a hard time visualizing why these equations are valid, 
let's just validate it with this polytropic equation here of PV to the N equals C. So if we have P1 V1 equals a constant, that constant is also equal to P2 V2 to the uh, 1.27 or to the N. And we can go ahead and just say that P1 V1 to the 1.27 is equal to P2 V2 to the 1.27. Now from some simple rearrangement, we just divide both sides by P1, both sides by V2. You'll see that you have P2 over P1 is equal to V1 over V2. And that V1, V2 is to the 1.27. So hopefully you could see where these uh, relations come from for uh, ideal gas undergoing a polytropic process. Now back to our enthalpy. We're interested in the temperature at 2. So at T2 equals, and we're going to look for that temperature. So we're going to manipulate our expression over here and try to find T2. So we have T2 over T1 is equal to, and we're going to go for pressure here because we have the pressure at both the inlet and outlet. So P2 over P1 to the N minus 1 over N. And we can choose some substitution here. So T2 divided by uh, T1 was 300, and of course you have an absolute, so 300 Kelvin is equal to P2, so we could just do 6 over 1, it's just a ratio to the N minus 1 over N, N being 1.27 minus 1 over 1.27. When you just multiply both sides by 300 and throw it into a calculator, you'll have that the temperature at the outlet, T2, is equal to 439 0.1 Kelvin. Now that we have that, we just go into our properties table. So on our properties table, we can go down to a temperature of 439.1 Kelvin. And the closest thing we have to it is 430 and 440. So if we interpolate it, we know it should be between 431 and 441. It should be very close to 441. And when you interpolate that, you'll find that the enthalpy at the exit is so at 439.1 kelvin you'll have that the enthalpy at the exit is equal to about 440.7 and that's kilojoules per kilogram and once again that's just from linear interpolation of the a22 property table now we have all of our knowns and we can plug them right back into our energy balance equation above so we have negative 187 Point eight, and that's kilowatts minus our power which we're going to solve for in a second plus we have one inlet and one outlet so that's just going to be the mass flow rate which was four and that's going to be 300.19 which is the inlet enthalpy minus the outlet enthalpy of 440.7 and that's kilojoules per kilogram and all of that is equal to zero. So then you just rearrange for the power, and you have that the power of the control volume is equal to negative 750 kilowatts. And that makes sense that we have a negative number here because the compressor actually consumes power. It doesn't give off power. It requires an electric motor or some sort of battery to keep the compressor running power coming into the compressor would actually be negative.